In the news tonight, teachers say they have been patient too long and demand collective bargaining. Because if we had our box, we wouldn't have been out here this morning. They would have called the union and we would have been in the classroom. And GTU Linden Rep says government is trying to intimidate teachers. That tactic will not work. They tried it in the past. And they believe that every time you stand up for your rights, this government feels that they're going to threaten you by telling you they're going to cut your pay. There is no letter by teachers across the country who continue to be out of the classroom demanding a living wage from the government. Now this is despite a notice from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development, which stated that those who are absent from the classroom will not be paid. Today, the striking teachers descended on the Ministry of Finance and they made their voices heard on the matter. Today is the seventh day of the strike action. While President Ali has called for patience and told teachers he has their backs, Teachers are saying his government should engage their union in collective bargaining. The president don't care about us, he don't have our box. Because if he had our box, we wouldn't have been out here this morning. They would have called the union and we would have been in the classrooms. We don't want to be here, but we are here because we were in for the struggle. When you get your pay, walk today, tomorrow you look in the account, there's nothing there. You know, personally, I feel encouraged by the president's tone of voice. Um, in terms of what he was encouraging teachers to be patient, but then it is overbearing at this point. It is overbearing. When teachers get a pay, they pay today, they broke today. This cannot work, Mr. President. This is an emergency. This is an emergency, and we have been patient for too long. For too long, we have been patient. So we ask the President to tell us about some numbers. Today I have to be on the street and not in the classroom with my children because my economic survival is at risk. We're at risk because our government has decided to put us on wait. Teachers of all the people have to be waiting on a proper livable wage. The president asking for patience, could we go to courts, could we go to singers, could we go to GWI, GPL and say, okay, we're not getting, we're only getting 6.5%. 6 so could you hold on until the president decides to make a decision? Then the president is saying that he, um, he talked to teachers directly. The union, the executive of the union is the authorized body to speak on behalf of me because they're taking out my $700 is going to the union. So when they say they pick, they select, they select the teachers to do whatever it is and they can't speak on behalf of me. We have been waiting all the time. We waiting and what we got? We got 6.5, right? So what more can we do? We can't, we can't take patients to the grocery store. We can't say, okay, if we go and buy something, here is patients and we get our stuff, we have to get our money, right? Many of us are looking at this being political and I would say for me it's not political. We just want a livable wage. For me, that, that, that is all we are asking for, a livable wage. What is a livable wage? Well, for me I would say probably and I would settle, let's say probably $150,000 minimum. That's the, being the lowest paid teacher. And that is something we can probably live with and move forward from there as time goes by. Uh, look, we know that all the oil resource is not available right now. But what is going on here right now, what's going on, we are seeing a lack of priority. Government needs to prioritize better than they are right now. The only country, to my knowledge, where teachers have been underpaid, where teachers have been spoken down to, where teachers have been treated differently, yet everyone expects us to sit back, accept, and smile with the government. We cannot sp smile with the government. Our minister, we respect her, but what we are asking is for her to respect us. Guyana has been the leading country when it comes to GDP. 
right? And GDP that would measure our entire bringing in and exporting and importing of goods and services, which means that we have topped, we are soaring where that is concerned. How more patient should we be the next four years or the next five years? There are countries in the Caribbean that we surpass where the GDP, but yet they are paying far more. They are paying their teachers far more than Guyana is paying their teachers. So patience, I don't think there is any more patience that we have left. There is no backing down by both sides, and the children writing the National Grade 6 Assessment and the CXC are the ones who will be more affected. The government has maintained that the strike is illegal and political, while the union and its members have rubbished those claims. In fact, the union said all steps were followed before teachers took to the streets. Washi. Hi, people. Washing made so easy since I found Washi. Washi me use wash me clothes and I can say. Washi soap powder, wash clothes so nice. Washi soap powder, leave your clothes color bright. Washi soap powder, leave me clothes smelling nice, of course. So give thanks to Washi soap powder for doing my laundry in right. Keep my clothes color bright. Have my clothes smelling nice for sure. I could not ask for more. Comes in lemon and original. It is a washing machine in a pack. Wash your soap powder, wash clothes so nice. Wash your soap powder, leave your clothes color bright. Wash your soap powder, have my clothes smelling nice, of course. Distributors located in the Starbrook market. It's here. Igloo ice cream fruit bars. Four mouth-watering flavors. Mango, pineapple, strawberry, and soursop. A beautiful combination of real fruit and igloo ice cream. Go old school with fluty popsicle. Classic flavors and refreshing goodness. Available at igloo outlets and all your favorite shops. Planning an elegant or corporate event? Let the experts at Star Rentals equip you. Give your event that spectacular five-star experience it deserves with the options of transparent tents of various sizes, indoor and outdoor formal bars and cocktail tables with LED lights, stage, podium with lighting, portable AC units, generators, executive portable washrooms, outdoor light tower, and much more. Call today, 226-3020, online, www.starrentalsgy.com. Star Rentals, we got you covered. Like their colleagues in other parts of the country, teachers from the mining town of Linden took to the streets demanding a living wage. Vanessa Kisun, General Council Representative of the Upper Demerara Branch of the Ghana Teachers Union, said the actions by the government are as a result of the impact of the strike. That's all it is. They're trying to intimidate teachers like they do the 10 days workers. Since they don't turn up, the first thing they holler, we're going to cut the pay. You understand? So we knew they were going to come with that, and we're prepared to deal with that. Our union would have said that they have our backs, and we will stand with our union. All right? And we want the government to know that that trick or that tactic will not work. They tried it in the past. And they believe that every time you stand up for your rights, this government feels that they're going to threaten you by telling you they're going to cut your pay. And then the president, and that's to show you how they're contradicting each other. He's asking us to be patient, and she's saying they're going to cut our pay. So I don't understand what is happening, but I know what is happening. They're getting their self-destructing. She said the government needs to come to the table and speak with their elected representatives. They know pre you're getting 1.8 and teacher is barely getting biscuit crumbs. And so they tell themselves that they're going to try to scare us and say we're going to intimidate, let me cut the money, let me hold the salary. But here now, we ain't giving up. Y'all try again. Here we all need to do. Mr. President, as you said in 2018, say it now. What about the teachers? What about the nurses? What about the police officers? Aren't they important too? Vice President, as you said in 2018, that you hope the teachers will call for collective bargaining. That's all we're asking for, collective bargaining. 
Oh man, don't go back on your word. Don't go back on what you said. Just what you said in 2018. Be man enough. Be woman enough. Come to the table. All we're asking for. Speak to our elected representative. Today is the seventh day of the teacher strike and they vow to intensify their actions in the coming days. And taste you will never decline. Citrus, citrus, citrus. Extra lemon and lime. It's the two combined. Citrus, citrus. It's one of a kind. Citrus, citrus. Extra lemon and lime. Extra lemon and lime. Taste the citrus in every sip. Guyana's President Air Finale told the United Nations Security Council today that they must incorporate measures at the Council to deal with climate and food security as it relates to wars and conflict. He made those comments at a meeting held under the team Maintenance of International Peace and Security, Climate, Food Security and Conflict. It was held at the United Nations headquarters in New York. The head of state said the interrelationship between climate change, food security, and peace and security is clear. Climate change and conflict are two of the main drivers of food insecurity and often overlap, creating a vicious cycle of instability and need. The assessment is that climate change is expected to grow significantly as a driver of conflict. We recognize too that armed conflict can induce food insecurity and the threat of famine. He feels that the Security Council should outline a series of steps that must include a full analysis of the impact. And just as we adopt measures to safeguard humanitarian interests, we must adopt measures in our procedures to deal with the effect on food and climate. At a minimum, we must be bold enough. We have the ability. We have the political will. We must now incorporate measures at the UN Security Council to deal with climate and food as it relates to wars and conflict.
For these and other stories, do visit us at our website www.rdproductiongy.com.